Yeah, like any investment process, and I can't stress enough um, the importance of that original um, business plan. Um, now, so to, to raise money in, in very simple terms for anyone that doesn't doesn't know, who hasn't done it, and I'm sure there's plenty of people that haven't. So, first thing, you have your idea, but that's really one percent. <laughs> Of, of the of the deal really that's the idea but it's really the other 99 percent how do you deliver it so you have to write a very detailed business plan there's lots of templates out there that can help um and which is where i got it from and i've written some before but you know the world changes so mm-hmm. and and then you get experts to review it for you people you know friends uh, people you've worked with um people that you trust um, people that have run businesses, uh, you know, sometimes quite painful. It comes back with, you know, some things you may not have seen, but it's all worthwhile. And then you finish it off and just give you some idea. My business plan, before any of this has started, before we'd even recruited anyone, before we'd even raised any money, was 96 pages. So I think it was about 15,000 words. And once you've done that, um, you check it and then, then you break it down into a pitch deck. Um, which is much more accessible and people and you can present it. You know, not too dissimilar to what we're doing now, but with more detail, of course. And then sometimes people use a teaser, like a two-pager, to entice people in. And then it's really selling um, your story to the people who may invest. Now, fortunately, the UK government's got a couple of good schemes. One of them, well, they're both related to each other. It's SEIS, which is the Seed Enterprise Scheme. So the first 150,000, which has been raised actually to 250. Um, on the latest controversial budget, but anyway, um, that's gone to 250. So, so the first, so what happens then? Say someone invests um, 50,000 pounds into the business, they will get 25,000 pounds off their next tax bill. Um, right. Not only that, if the sink does, if the ship does sink, then um, they get almost all that money that they had they paid in cash back. And then once you go past that 150 or 250, then it goes to EIS, which is then up to 5 million. And then, then the, the tax back is 30%. So this is really important for any business that wants to start because without that, you know, your money, unless it's through a convertible loan note, which will get too difficult to explain. But essentially, people are buying the story because it, you, know, you haven't got any figures to prove. You haven't got any sales. You haven't got any profits. They're all forecasts. So it's more of an art than a science at this point. So it, you know, it has been underpinned and... Um, and supported by the government in that tax break and if, and if something goes wrong. But nonetheless, people, you know, that, that's not a reason for people to lose their money. So they have to believe your story. And, and particularly the leader, in my case, it's always me. I get the team around with me, of course. We've got a very skilled team, but I didn't have it at the start. Mm-hmm. So that grows. The more money you get, the more the team gets, and then the more it, it uh, the integrity of the business grows. So it's about selling a story, but you can't sell the story unless you believe it yourself and unless you've written a very detailed plan, and any business that hasn't written a business plan will fail. Well, I mean, this one's quite an attractive, because it is so different, then it does excite people, but, you know, with every with everything, it's about a network, um, getting the right people in, uh, mm-hmm. and and I would never employ someone, say at the beginning, at the beginning of a business, that, or anyone that comes in that hasn't got more expertise than me, otherwise there's no point. So, and you use your network. I worked for Sainsbury's for 14 years, so when John Hartland, who was a retail board director, Sainsbury's retired, the first thing I did was met him almost, he was leaving, he was leaving the building, I was there at the door, asking him to come and help. So he was the first person, and he's still involved now, as our chair, and he's, um, you know, incredible advice um, and charged with nothing like you'd expect for someone of that experience. So it's about building a network, but then the non-exec directors I bring in, you know, they have a network and they have people who want to invest because don't forget it's a benefit to other people to invest as well, particularly when, you know, we've gone up 13 times in valuation in three years. So we hope that will go up, continue more. So the earlier you get in, the better it is for the investor. And also the most important thing about the SAI scheme, after three years, which keeps the investors patient that after three years um, on, an, on an exit so everyone that does want an exit when, when the company is sold or changes hand considerably then there's no capital gains tax for the people that came in right. and they last and they hold their shares for three years.